let me tie this back to artificial neural networks. It turns out the dumbest thing you can do is have a hidden unit for every single data point in your data. You see why? While yes, that means your model can perfectly hit all of those data points, it essentially means that your model is going to do a one of those wonky line things because you can hit every single possible point. That's worthless for making predictions. However, if you limit your artificial neural network to have fewer units than you actually need, then something really cool starts to happen. They start fighting over how they represent the function, and they start being as simple as they can to fit to the data, and they start making really good predictions, and the result is we can predict the future. How cool is that? Let me show you an example here. Um, So here's a paper we're in the process of trying to publish, but we do a bunch of, okay, here we're doing some time series stuff, and we trained on these points, and we try to predict what's going to happen in the future, and the green line here is what our neural network model predicts will happen in the future, and the red points are what actually happens given the equation that we're trying to predict. This happens to be a chaotic time series. Um, they get cooler. Here's some other evidence. This is uh, data that I scraped off of the US Bureau of Labor Statistics. And this reports the uh, rate, rate of people that apply for unemployment. And you can see that in the economy there are booms, and then there's busts, and then there's booms and busts. and the economy follows these strange patterns. Now let's suppose, for example, that this part were blocked off. You couldn't see this. This is all you had is the history of what happened up until 1969. What do you think is going to happen next? Using all the intelligence of your human brains. It just slowly increases. Why do you think that? Well, it just kind of looks like in the shaded area, it's kind of slowly increasing already, so I'm okay. say It's pretty fair to say that after a bust, there's always a boom. And so here's pretty clearly in a bust, so it's probably going to boom again. Um, but how, how well and how accurate into the future do you think you could predict? Well, by using these neural networks and then simplifying and simplifying them as much as we can while fitting the evidence, um, Here's what other model, existing state-of-the-art models do. Our green line is the one we did. And look at that. We predicted that there would be a boom. And then about that number of years later, there would be a following bust. And then it would bounce around here for a while. And then there would be a boom, followed by yet another bust. And we basically nailed it. This is the true future. Of course, now it's the past, or we wouldn't be able to do it. But we did not give the model any data beyond this point and yet it was able to predict pretty darn accurately what was going to happen in something as complex as the labor market of the economy of the United States. I think that's kind of cool, don't you? I, I claim this is outperforming what humans could do as far as time series prediction goes. Um, here's the data plotting of the total number of airline passengers reported by some airline company. You can see they're growing over time. And just by showing it this, it predicted this is what would happen. Some other models came reasonably close. Our model came pretty close. None of them were perfect. So we couldn't foresee the future. We didn't know that Congress was going to pass the Airline Affordable Care Act or whatever happened in the economy. But even still, the dynamics are pretty regular, and we got it pretty closely. Um, more predictions. Not perfect, but close. And we wrote a bunch of analysis out of that. So there you go. I claim that by simplifying the model while fitting what you know is the best way to make predictions. It's never true, but it's the best way to make predictions. And that's what Occam's razor says, is when you want to predict something, you'll do best if you don't overcomplicate it.
Okay, we have talked about Occam's razor. Yeah. On the uh, one model that you had for unemployment, you said. Yeah. So you had the training bid up to like the 50s or 60s or something, and then you had it, the test data from like that point until now. Yeah. And you saw, and you saw that your model fit that without knowing that beforehand. Yes. So if you're going to publish this paper, you should continue that on to past the future now so that when people look at it in the future, you'll be like, he got it right. <laughs> yeah, that would be pretty awesome. That, way, that would prove that we didn't cheat. Um, to be entirely frank, oh, you, wait. I'm sitting here looking at it on my laptop, and you don't even see what I'm looking at. Um, sorry. To be entirely frank, we picked a stopping point that worked out pretty well. <laughs> And people do that. You want to spin your algorithm in a reasonable light, show that it actually works. And it does work no matter where you put it, but it works really well if you, if you stopped right at this point. So um, yeah, there's a little fudge factor here. And if we really want to know how well it predicts, put your money where your mouth is and start buying stock, right? Um, I'm, I have zero money invested in this algorithm right now. So all disclaimers aside, I don't yet trust it to predict the stock market, but it does seem to do well in a lot of cases. Would it also follow though that you're saying as you go on farther into the future, it deviates more and more? But that means that if you yeah. put it like that's also why we cut it off here instead of showing another 20 years, is because pretty soon it just gets wrong. But if you did all of your training data from like 1948 until today, that would make tomorrow's prediction a lot better than it would. When it's like that, right? Yeah, if, if we were to always use this model and every day we'd update it and redo it, or use some uh, incremental way to keep refining it, we can pretty consistently at least know what's going to happen in the near future. And unless something weird happens, sometimes it's wrong. So, you know, this, we, try, we also tried it on the stock market, by the way, and it did terribly. The stock market is notoriously hard, and if it did really well, I probably wouldn't be here teaching anymore. <laughs> so, we have not solved the world's problems. What we have is found is something that predicts somewhat predictable series with reasonable accuracy. Okay. So, an artificial neural network is one type of function approximator, one type of thing that you can use to fit two data points, and you can use it to make predictions. Um, I want to teach another one, uh, which is decision trees, because you're going to use it in your next assignment. Let's see. Oh, I had another topic I wanted to cover with. One more topic first, then I'll talk about doing your next assignment. And by next one, I mean the one after the next one, because the next one's the term. Okay. Uh, let's start all the way over. Hello, welcome to Artificial Intelligence. What is intelligence? If you'll remember, at the beginning of this class, I divided intelligence into two pieces. Can't remember if I did it this way the first time or not. I'm going to say there's knowledge and wisdom. That's a pretty uh, standard way of breaking it down, isn't it? I think last time you said experience instead of wisdom. Okay. There's all kinds of ways to do it. For now, for today, let's say intelligence consists of knowledge and wisdom. Now, you could very easily say, no, wait a minute, wisdom consists of intelligence and knowledge, or, you know, it, it's all terminology. I'm not going to battle you over what they mean. For today, intelligence encompasses every thinking ability, and knowledge and wisdom are two different thinking abilities. Um, let's say knowledge is things about the way they are, things like, one plus one is two. Uh, the capital of the United States is Washington, D.C. The name of your AI professor is Dr. Gashler. Um, you are a human being. You live on planet Earth. Anything that is. The, uh, existential things. Things about the past. This nation was founded in 1776. Anything about the present. Uh, peanut butter costs about $1.50 a jar. I have no idea if that's accurate. Um, and I guess, does the future count as knowledge too? Or speculation? We'll leave the future alone. So wisdom, what is wisdom? 
I claim wisdom is being able to make good choices. So wisdom is things like, um, to thine own self be true. Things like, uh, whatever thou art, act well thy part. Shakespeare is a pretty wise guy. Um, maybe do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Dare I quote Jesus in a class like this? I better not. Um, th those are the kinds of things people call wisdom. Let me do Confucius. Uh, 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 I happen to speak Mandarin. I don't think Confucius said that one, though. I'm trying to think. Did you say that one? He did say that one. That one was Confucius, I think. Okay, well, anyway. It means uh, nobody's so perfect that they don't make a mistake. Okay, and wisdom is if you if you make stupid decisions like you are having a freak gasoline fight with your friends and you light up a match. This is a good example of not wise, even though you may know all about history of the earth. Okay, why do I divide it this way? Well, how do we implement knowledge? I'm going to claim we say green line represents implementation. Don't we get knowledge through a process called learning? And don't we get wisdom through a process called uh, decision making? Meaning, if you are really good at learning and you do a lot of it, you'll have a lot of knowledge. And if you're really good at making decisions and you make them effectively, they'll say you're wise. And if you can do both of those, you're intelligent. Isn't decision making a result of wisdom? Yeah, you could say wisdom imply wisdom causes you to do decision making. Maybe predicting based on your knowledge. Yeah, so again, we're getting down to defining it, and I don't know if we can define it. Let's just say that, I hate to do it this way, let's just say I'm right for now. I'm going to define this as the way it is.